Hare Krishna question if someone has lived a normal good life uh, throughout one's life but in a sudden uh, moment of frustration because of some uh, uh, r some upset in romantic relationship or something like that the person commits suicide so what is the destination of such a person answer firstly the when such a event happens in someone's life uh, and say the uh, relatives of that person are are emotionally devastated by that now our important point mm, the important point is that that is a time primarily for commiseration not so much time for philosophical exposition so what we need to if the people if the bereaved are there and they are grieving the most important thing is to uh, reassure them that god is with them and god is also that krishna is also there with the deceased soul so krishna is always there in the hearts of everyone and no matter how a person departs krishna is there even in that person's heart so our goal should be not to drive home any particular philosophical point it is to be uh, uh, to help people who are grieving to re recover and often at such times uh, some kirtan some uh, words of consolation can help people uh, recover faster and better now beyond that mm, uh, so the most important point is not just to drive home a philosophical point but is to be best to be a uh, a friend and a well-wisher like Krishna is Surudam Sarvabhutana so that's what devotees are on behalf of Krishna now regarding specifically what happens to a person who ends his or her life <coughs> because of uh, because of some frustration generally the the result is that the soul does not get another physical body immediately because we are meant to live in a particular body for a particular period of time as per our past karma and if we leave that body immediately or if we leave that body prematurely say if somebody is supposed to live for 60 years and the person uh, destroys the body through suicide at the age of 35 then 25 years are still remaining and uh, so the soul by the karma won't get a next body and that's how the soul becomes disembodied now there are various forms of uh, disembodied living they are in general grouped by the name of ghosts now the word ghost might seem very scary and frightening but actually the ghosts are more miserable than they are misery causing and the most important thing is that ghostly existence is also not permanent and it is not just the moment of uh, death that determines one's destination although the moment of death and the mode of death do play fact, uh, role uh, do play a significant role but also how one has lived also makes a difference so that means that normally we often tend to have a very monistic or a very homogeneous idea of the world beyond this world but that is not true just like you know a soul may become go to the heavens but even within heavens there are grades there is indra there are indra's assistants and there are there are the subordinate gods not all of them have so, the same level of opulence if a soul goes into a dog's body within the dog's body also there are variations so there can be a pet dog who is pampered throughout life and there can be a street dog who is uh, <coughs> pummeled most of the life so why is there a difference within the species of that's because of karma so when a soul becomes disembodied if the soul has lived a good life prior to the sudden burst of impulse which led to suicide then that will play a role if the soul suffers in a ghostly body primarily because of attachment to the body and the desire to enjoy bodily pleasures which are frustrated in the ghostly body that means in the ghostly body 
the person desires to say enjoy delicious food but is not able but there is no tongue to eat that food then that naturally causes frustration but if the person recognizes that actually hmm, yes but if the person has not been very attached in the previous life if the person has lived a relatively uh, moral life a principled life and the attachments have been under control then the extent of suffering even in ghostly life is much lesser and that's why whenever there are ways of interacting with uh, paranormal beings such as planchets or whatever then it also is found that there are different kinds of beings over there so it's a uh, different kinds of beings it's not that all of them are malevolent go wanting to cause harm not all of them benevolent wanting to do good but there are different kinds of beings over there at that different times and the important thing is to recognize that wherever a person is that person always has uh, free will and especially in the puranas there are many stories if somebody has because of some bad karma become disembodied then the relatives of that person by uh, doing spiritual activities by doing devotional activities can benefit the deceased so if the devotee if the relatives arrange for say bhagavat sapta or arrange for hari naam kirtan and then they pray that the spiritual benefit of this go to the deceased person then those spiritual sound vibrations can definitely help the person to deal with the situation uh, can will definitely help the person to become free also faster from that disembodied state so we understand that the law of karma is materially inexorable but it is spiritually adjustable krishna says aham tvam sarupapebhyo mokshayishyami mahashu jaha that i'll free you from all sinful reactions so those who surrender krishna's guarantee is that what is indicates is that krishna is above the law of karma although we are under the law krishna is above the law so it's a three level hierarchy we below the karma law of karma krishna is in the law krishna is above the law of karma and the law of karma is in between so if we connect with krishna and pray to krishna for the well being of someone that also benefits the person who has gone away from us so the important point is that at three levels firstly we recognize that the person whatever the person the person has lived that will determine the destination in future so even if somebody has temporarily gone to a disembodied state even in that state uh, the extent of uh, pleasure or pain will depend on how one has lived earlier secondly that by doing devotional activities although we cannot benefit uh, that person directly in a normal material activities we cannot give medicine food or other things like that but by doing devotional activities and praying and offering those devotional activities for the benefit of that person we can benefit them even now and thirdly <coughs> we need to know that actually these sort of uh, unfortunate impulsive acts they happen especially when uh, people are caught up in uh, the throes of very strong passions and the whole purpose of families is to offer support system so that such emotions can be uh, expressed and resolved in less unfortunate ways so now in some situations it may happen that a person may not express the emotions and then those emotions may drive a person to do such wrong things so it's not that at that time the relatives have to uh, family members need to blame themselves you know ultimately every person takes a decision and that person is responsible for that decision but overall you know, we can try Uh, to have closer bonds uh, so that we can uh, deal we can respond maturely and cope with the whatever has happened so the important point is to recognize that what we uh, could have done to prevent it but beyond that to what we can do to learn from it and to grow
so yes it's not it's to some extent life is uh, sometimes cruel and it's natural that we may get frustrated but we need uh, proper outlets for that frustration and actually it is the responsibility of every individual to find out uh, what the outlets for frustration can be for me so we find it out for ourselves and so and we find it out for uh, for our loved ones so that in case they need us they are available for us and, and that way we can ensure that uh, or at least we can facilitate that when th things go wrong in life we respond in less unfortunate ways and we respond in ways which can take us uh, closer to our spiritual reality closer to god and rather than uh, do something unfortunate like this so overall uh, <clears throat> what is the destination of a person actually whatever the situation the person goes to even if that be a disembodied state even in that disembodied state krishna is there so the important point is that we have the power even now to help that person whatever be the destination of that person and we if we are connected with krishna and krishna is connected with that person then through this trans material system of uh, connection we can help that person and we can help that person to move to a better situation in the onward life journey thank you hare krishna